What's up guys, Tech Savvy Buyer here. So today I've got something super cool that I wanna share with you guys. I am gonna show you how you can take your PS2 games, whether they are in ISO files and backups on your computer or their physical game discs, and play them on your laptop or your computer in 4K resolution. Now a couple of things just up front for this to work, you're gonna to need to have a pretty decent gaming PC slash computer with a multiple core processor. So chances are if you have a computer in the last five years, or even 10 years for that matter, more than likely it's gonna work. However, there are some limitations. If you have an older PC, chances are you're not gonna be able to pull this off. So if you have like an i5, you know, third generation or fourth generation or something like that, you might be struggling getting some of the results that we're getting. Now there is a whole bunch of tweaks and stuff that you can use to still get it run at full speed, but that'll be a separate video or a separate tutorial at another date. Today, I'm gonna to assume that you have a beast of a PC that can actually run a PS2 emulator. And it doesn't take a whole lot to run Run it. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you get everything set up, all the links to the files that you're going to need for everything that I use. I'm going to show you how to use a DualShock 4 with the emulator. That way it feels as natural as possible. Even a DualShock 3 will work with this, but in this video we're just going to focus on the DualShock 4. So all the apps you need, all the software you need, and all the different configuration settings you're going to need to get the games look crisp in 4K resolution. Now before we go ahead and do that, I will show you guys the actual footage of what you could expect to see and we'll do some compare and contrast where it's running a native resolution versus the upscaled 4K resolution that I'm going to tweak settings in, get it to display. Now before we jump into all this stuff, I do want to let you guys know that I have officially started a Patreon account so you guys can go ahead and be a support to this channel. I've got a couple of tiers and it's actually super awesome so this isn't just me asking you guys for money or something stupid like that, but it's a way for you to get closer to me and ask me those questions because I know there's a ton of questions I get in the comments below and I can't field all of them. So this will be a way for me to come to one place and do it a little bit easier. So if you want to be, you know, just a basic supporter, you can go and join the Discord. It's only two bucks a month. And if you want one-to-one -one support with me, meaning if you're trying to hack a Vita or you're trying to mod a console or whatever, and you need my direct help, like available on a phone or texting you through direct messages and stuff like that, or even like remotely log into your computer and do stuff for you, that is my hardcore fan package and it's for 25 bucks a month. So that way it lets me kind of focus on which ones actually really care about this channel and want to be a hardcore fan supporter of it. Now keep in mind that is limited because I can't dedicate personal time to 100 people at once, obviously. So there's limited slots, take advantage of it while you can and off my Patreon stage. Anyways, let's jump into the actual video. Let me show you guys some gameplay and all that stuff coming up. Alright, so I bet you guys probably thought that that was super awesome looking at some of those old school games in their native resolution compared to when you upscale it into 4K. So let's dive right into this. If you guys are interested in how I did this, I'm going to show you what you're going to need. So the two things we're going to focus on is the actual emulator and then the app that you're going to need to connect your DualShock 4 to use that when playing. So I've got links in the description for these two websites opened up here. We'll go through real quick. The first one is PCSX2.net. That is the actual emulator. You're going to click on to the download page 
you're gonna go there and you're gonna download the Windows Edition if you have Windows. Again, this tutorial is designed specifically for Windows, so if you guys are using Mac, try and follow along if you can and you know use Mac keys wherever possible, but it's not really intended for that. Anyways, back to the tutorial. So here is the latest version that they have. It's the 1.40 and all you need is the standalone installer. So we're gonna go ahead and download that. Once it finishes, you're gonna go through the setup and make sure you follow everything. Now, I already have this installed, so I'm not gonna go through, but it's just a basic quick install of everything and you move forward from there. Next, what we're gonna need is to configure the DualShock 4 controller to work with Windows and with this app. So what we're gonna do is go over to this website. It's called ds4windows.com and very simply, you're gonna click on the green Download Now button. Once you do that, you'll be taken over to a GitHub page, which is where the file is actually located. And from there, you're gonna download the zip file that you see up front. The latest version was released three years ago, guys. They're not making a new one because they don't need to. Works flawlessly. So you go ahead and download that, unzip it, just like I have here, and you're gonna run the Windows EXE. Now, this isn't an installation, it's actually just an app that runs local. So what you're gonna wanna do is extract this onto your desktop or someplace where you wanna access it because this is what you're gonna need to run every single time you connect your DualShock 4. So once you have that up and running, this is what it should look like. So I'll open up DualShock 4, and see, I've created a shortcut for it, but if you go ahead and click it, you're gonna get this screen here. Now, you can see I have one plugged in via USB, if I hit stop, it's gonna disconnect my DualShock 4 controller. So at this point, we're just gonna assume that you and I both don't have a DualShock 4 connected. Of course, you're gonna need a micro USB cable to connect this. Now you can also do this over Bluetooth, but I wouldn't recommend that because I had some issues with that. It would disconnect on its own and there were some latency issues. So the best way to do this is just plug it in. Once you plug your controller in, just like I'm about to do now, I've plugged in, you're gonna hit start and it should detect your controller and then give it a blue color on the light bar. You can change the color to be whatever you want, use a custom color or any other color that you want, basically. Anyways, now that we have DualShock 4 activated, we can leave that aside. If you have any issues where it's not responding, just leave it on the default setting, hit stop and hit start again. You don't have to edit any profiles in here at all. I haven't touched any settings whatsoever. Make sure you leave this window open, do not close it, just minimize it at most. Now let's go over to the PCSX2. So I'm gonna type in PCSX2, open it up here. This is what it will look like. So at first you're probably thinking, okay, how do I boot games into this? And it's actually really simple. So the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is locate your actual game files. And those come in the format of ISOs. So if you can see here, I have a bunch of different ISOs of different games that I have backups of. And this is what I'm gonna use or what I've showed you guys in my testing. Now. Getting an ISO is your business, guys. I'm not gonna tell you where you can go and get them. That is openly available on the internet, so just a quick search of Google and you guys should be good there. So I'm going to select a game here. I'm gonna pick God of War 2. And if I wanna boot into it, all I have to do is click boot CD DVD full, and then you're gonna be presented with this screen here. So this is a full boot, which means it's gonna take you through the BIOS and everything is that. Now, again, don't worry about my resolution here. This resolution is actually running in 4K, so it looks super crisp. And even though up here it says 640 by 512 or 448, that is always gonna display that. That's the native resolution of the game being used. Now, regardless of what you change your settings into, this will always say that. So you can probably already see here that this is really crisp. Now I'm gonna go into the settings and show you real quick. If I go in config, I go into video, go into plugin settings, I'm gonna change this quickly down to native and hit okay and look at the difference there. This is the native PS2 resolution. This is what you're gonna see when you're booting up for the first time. You don't have any of these settings adjusted up on the top as you can see up here. And as you can also see, it still says 512 by 448. Now let's do a quick sit, uh, switch back. And we'll go back to change this to custom and in my custom I have 3840 by 2160 which is 4k I'm gonna hit ok boom it changes to a crisp resolution right there you can see and it still says that so don't go off of the resolution that's up there that can throw a lot of people off the main thing you want to worry about up here is the speed it should be running at hundred percent or 60 FPS that's when you know that your system can handle it in this resolution so now that I've shown you guys how I have this here, what I'm gonna show you guys is my actual settings. That's the main reason you guys are here. So I don't touch anything in emulation, memory cards, plug-in, that stuff is all general. 
The main thing you're gonna be editing inside here is the video settings, and that too you're gonna go straight into plugin. So take a good look at what I have opened up here because this is the settings that work best for me. You can always go and play around with them, but I found that these tend to give me the most stable resolution without a lot of artifacting and glitches. So the first thing I've done here is I've selected my default hardware device. Now you can see I have a GTX 1080 Ti. I can go ahead and click that as well. But for the purpose of this video, you wanna leave this to your default hardware device. And you can change that later on if you have issues, but we'll stick with default for the start. Second, what you're gonna use for rendering is OpenGL, which is basically if you're using an NVIDIA card. You can use hardware emulation through that, or you can pick a different DirectX 3D version that might work. Now again, these are my settings. This is what works for me. It may not 100% work for you based on your CPU and your specs. So keep that in mind when you go ahead and adjust all these settings. Now interlacing, this one is important. You wanna make sure you pay attention to this one because what I noticed a lot is that I got shaking. So it says use blend if shaking. Shaking is the screen kind of seemed like it was vibrating and that's because the original resolution of PS2 is so low, it's not interlaced, meaning that there isn't anything to uh, stop anti-aliasing or jagged edges from showing. So it basically fills that gap in and these are the different ways that it does that. Um, and it's the same thing as doing anisotropic filtering or I don't know if I butchered that, but anisotropic, whatever. <laughs> but what you wanna set this is to blend, and that is triple filtering. So TFF is for triple, blending is for double with the BFF. So we'll stay on TFF, and in here, what we're gonna do is adjust our resolution. You wanna click this to custom, and then set it to 3840 by 2160, as that's 4K resolution. Now, word of caution, if your display itself is not a 4K display, there is absolutely no point in doing this. The max that you should do it to is what your display is actually at. So if you only have a full HD monitor or a quad HD monitor, QHD, basically 2K resolution, adjust it to that setting. In texture filtering, we're gonna leave this to bilinear forced, and the bottom for the anisotropic filtering, we're gonna turn this up all the way to the max at 16X. We're gonna change our CRC hack level to aggressive, we will leave the enable hardware hacks checked. And if you click on that, I have set MSAA down to 16 as well. Everything else is off. And I've also clicked on the icon for align sprite. Make sure you guys do this as well. Hardware depth, leave that checked as well. If it's not checked in your stock settings, make sure you do that. And in the blending unit accuracy, the one I kept here is high recommended for a high end PC. Now again, I wouldn't recommend you go any further than that. There's really no need, it's overkill. It's like taking a bazooka for a fly, like I said before. So it's just fine to keep this on high. If you have a really crappy PC or a crappy laptop, then change this to low for the basic setting. But in this example, we're running this on high because we want everything to be maxed out here. Now the shader configuration, I haven't touched anything on this. If this isn't already enabled for you guys, I can't remember if it is, just make sure that your settings match mine. So tick the enable shade boost and tick the enable FXAA as well. And that's pretty much it for the settings of video. This is what you need to have enabled and this is how you're gonna get 4K to work. Now, if you notice that on your system, for whatever reason, you don't get this to work, there's other settings you can go in and tweak. So for example, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop back to native here, leave everything else as it is, and you can see how it's looking pretty crap there. Now, what this emulator is pretty cool for and has like automatic settings in there is you can take this default resolution that's here, which was what 644 by 512 or whatever it was, and you can change the native just to get multiplied. So if you ever use an emulator on Android like PPSSPP, for example, you know how you can upscale it directly just by clicking two or three times a native. Now six times a native is pretty much 4K. It's close to 4K. And you can see it's coming up pretty crisp there. Now based on your computer, you may be able to get away with just changing this native setting. Of course, leaving everything else the same. Now you'll have to play around with this and find the sweet spot. These are the settings that I'm using that gets me 4K. So I leave it on custom so I get that custom resolution because multiplying it by eight times is actually more than 4K and it's pointless on my display. Now these, again, like I said, these are my settings. Make sure you copy them and that's pretty much how you guys get this done. So. We'll go ahead and show you how it runs. So I will go actually go ahead and do a load state so you can save those in the emulator as well. And I have one saved up here. And let's show you guys some gameplay in 4K of God of War in a little bit more detail. So 
And now here, this is using the DualShock 4, guys. And that's the best way to play this. You don't want to be playing an emulator with a keyboard or anything like that. But look how crisp that looks. That is what you want to go for, right? This makes PS2 games actually playable. In 2019, I mean, looking at these games in their original resolution, so I'll switch it back here just so you can see, and it's, it's definitely no fun when you're playing in native resolution. I mean, it's so outdated. Look at that. It's like an eyesore. You can barely see the pixels. You... It's not horrible, horrible, but it's not the ideal way to play today, right? Like, this isn't going to get someone interested in playing a game, especially when it's an older classic like this. You want to enjoy it in today's resolution. And the best part is, you don't have to wait for upscaled HD versions or remastered versions of PS2 games. You're basically scaling it all and remastering it yourself by doing this. Look at that. Look at that, that's pretty much remastered right there, guys. There's absolutely no need to go and pay extra money for a PS2 game that's been remastered in 4K or whatever, or HD on other consoles. So good games like God of War 2 or Gran Turismo 3, um, Resident Evil 4, as you guys saw in the video as well. Like, I know Resident Evil 4 has been remade in HD and you can play that way as well on PC, but hey, I mean, if you've got PS2 games lying around, some like Silent Hill 2, for example, that hasn't been remastered, or um, the Crash Bandicoot series. I know the recent one's been remastered and whatnot, but you get my point. Here's the way that you play your PS2 games in 4K, guys. That was it. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy tutorial. If you have any questions, just don't forget to ask me below. Because like I said, my settings might vary from what your settings are going to be like, but that's pretty much how you do this. And if again, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm going to try my best to help you guys out. But that was the tutorial. And that is pretty much how you run any PS2 game in 4K. So if you guys saw, the settings aren't super complicated. Getting this to run on a decent PC isn't hard either. So you shouldn't have any trouble. But again, if you do have questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget, you can sign up to be a Patreon to my Patreon account and get closer support like that if you'd like. As well as, guys, if you're new to this channel and you like what you saw and you want to go see some more of this stuff, don't forget to smash that like button and that subscribe button so you're always up to date with my content as I push it out. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care.